Hey guys, this video is going to be a follow-up to the video I did about uh, off-grid systems and grid type systems and how I have two of them and what would happen if that uh, furnace inverter which runs my grid type were to take a dive on me, what I would do. So, quick review, this is the, what my roof looks like with all my solar on it. We have, this is a part of the uh, grid type system, this is the pitch array or the pitch roof, it faces west. This is the uh, array on the flat roof which faces south. Um, you've got these four panels and these two panels here, which are on the off-grid or grid tie hybrid, which is the Outback GVFX 3524 and the Flex Max 60, which runs my dedicated circuit box. So let's just go through it. Um, first thing you want to do is size up your strings. Um, right away, I see two issues. This guy has too many panels. This guy doesn't have enough. However, we're in luck. Um, and by that I mean I can take these two panels and move them up here and that'll solve my issues for both of them. Um, let me just make this a little nicer here. There we go. Good enough. So, um, sizing up your strings. Looking at this right now I see 15 panels. I'm thinking five strings of three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, good. Down here, either four strings, I'm oh, sorry, three strings of four. Sorry, either four in series or three in series, what I'm trying to say. So either one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so let's go to the string tool on Midnight Solar. I've already got the information put, uh, punched in. So let's start with the pitch roof. Three in series, five in parallel. Open circuit is going to be 98.7 volts. Amperage is 38. Okay, not bad. Um, it is right at the line though on the classic 150. 1.7. But keep in mind, this is a west facing array. It's not going to get um, the amount of sun that the other one, the south array, will get. So that will be just fine. All right, let's take a look at. Um, three in series and four parallel for the flat roof. That looks really good. 2400 watts, open circuits 98, classic 150, 0 0.9. There we go. That'll work. That's, that works out just fine. So now we know how, um, how our strings are going to look. We're going to have a total of nine strings. Four on the south array and um, five on the pitch array. So, next step. Um, but I want to say one thing first. All these panels, guys, were put on back in 2007. So all these panels have MC3 connectors, not MC4. Keep that in mind. Because we're going to have to combine these strings up. And at the end of each string, we're going to need an extension. This is about 30 feet from here to this combiner box. Uh, rough guess. Uh, probably about, I think, 25 feet on this end here. So I'm going to need five sets of extensions and also five sets of MC3 to MC4 adapters on this string alone. Down here, four sets of uh, adapters and four sets of extensions. Uh, I won't get into the links, you know, but just you're going to need extensions because you got to get into these combiner boxes. Um, okay, so now let's just play with this guy here. We got our five strings. We got our extensions. We're all done. What do you do? You got to peel this whole thing apart. You got to get the uh, get up there and take you know take all the hole downs off. Uh, you know, go in there, cut all the zip ties that are in there because you're going to basically going to be rewiring this entire array, all of it. Uh, you may not have to cut all the zip ties. You may get lucky um, because of the fact that you're only dealing with the positive out of this guy and the negative out of this guy. So you may be able to use the ones, you know, if they're connected together. It all depends how it's wired up. If they're wired up, usually they will go, they'll pull, these. they used to back in, back in the older days, well, oh no, seven, so I watched them do it. They took this guy here, his positive comes, comes out of here, it goes into the combiner box, and they just go negative, positive, all the way around, and they come this, and they have this, this other guy here, his negative will go to the combiner box. Same thing up top. Um, like I said, I watched them wire it up, so um, it's uh, that's how they did it on, on my array. Your array may be different. Um, so what you got to do is, like I said, peel all that apart, figure out how it's all wired, string, you know, wire them all up together. Then you have your, you know, your MC3 to MC4 adapter on this end, 
you know, say you're your positive, and you're going to pull your negative off of this guy, whatever, and then you bring them to your combiner box. So you have your positive and negative that goes to your combiner box. Same thing goes in the entire array. Um, do the same thing down here as well. So um, quite a bit of work, just taking all of it apart and, and like I said, rewiring it. Um, once that's done, um, you're going to go ahead and take your, um, you're going to go ahead and parallel, oh, I'm sorry, land them all, uh, land your negatives under your negative bus bar inside your combiner. You're going to have your five breakers for your, your strings, which are 15 amp DC breakers. Um, and you're going to, you know, hook those up. And then you're going to parallel them up. There's a piece of metal that they give you. And I think I have a picture of it. Um, let's see. Let's go to Midnight Solo's website. Let's see. Combiners. Let's just look at Here we go. Yeah, there's a piece of metal right here at the top uh, that you just use to combine them up. So you'd have five, and you bring your wire out that way. You're uh, you're positive, and you have a combined wire, you know, um, for your negative. But this is how you parallel up your your breakers. So back to this. So that's what you do. You wire it up. You bring your positive and negative combined wire down. Um, you got to bring a ground to it as well. So another thing to keep in mind. Um, same thing goes for this guy. You're going to have four strings, four, um, you know, four sets of MC3 to MC4 adapters, as well as your extensions you're going to need, however long they're going to be. And then you have um, uh, your, your, uh, your combined wire. I'm, I'm going to say number six on both of these. Um, you know, positive and negative comes down. Um, and, then, and then you got to bring them down to your E-panel and then land them in there. Um, on my e-panel for this, these two and this case here, um, I have uh, a PV input bus bar. That's where I landed my uh, input from, from these guys here, from the, the, the combiner wire. Um, you can't land these there. What you're going to have to do is land them on a breaker. So what I would do is, since this array is 38 amps and this array is 30 amps, I'd get a, a 50 amp DC breaker for him, a 40 amp DC breaker for this guy, and I'd put them in your e-panel um, for your new uh, um, inverter you're going to do. There's a spot on the upper right hand corner where you can put in these uh, breakers and I'll show what these breakers look like real quick. Right here, uh, NMEDC 5 amp through 100 amp. Um, you, you basically would wire up your solar to that. And so there's your, uh, your solar shutdown switches in your, uh, your e-panel. Um, that's just one, there's other ways to do it, I'm sure, but that's just one way to do it. And then you would have your, um, your other breakers. Let me show, go ahead and show you those two while I'm thinking about it. Your, uh, your Denrail breakers, you could put in your e-panel for, um, for your other charge controllers, which are right. Okay, these are AC breakers. Here we go. No, nope, I think that was the one. Uh, this is ground fault protection. Hi. Okay, that's not those. Here they are, right here. This is the ones. They have these from 1 amp all the way up to 63. So what you would do is you'd have, get a couple of these. These are what's called Denrail, uh, Denrail um, uh, breakers. You would get um, a couple of those. Um, since they're classic 150s, um, this controls the current that would uh, go out to your battery bank, basically to shut off the, the, the charge controller. So you'd have to size it up. You know, do you want to do a 60 amp breaker? I mean, it all depends on how much power you're going to have going to it. You could have a 60 amp breaker DIN rail, or you could go with um, like the one I just showed you a second ago, which is, um, let me find it again. Oh, I went past it. This guy here, you can get a couple of 80 amp breakers and um, wire those up as well. So, just a way to shut out the charge controllers. You definitely want a way to shut out the charge controllers. Um, but, the fun part is going to be all the conduit you're going to have. Because um, you're going to have to have a piece of conduit coming out of here. Um, same for this guy. And what you're going to want to do is probably have a junction to bring all your combined wires down. So you're going to have three sets. So um, 
What, one thing I could probably think of off the top of my head would be to replace that NMPB3 with a, like an NMPB6 um, and just drill a one inch, you know, for a piece of one inch conduit uh, opening into it and um, bring these two wires in because there's going to be plenty of room for it. There's like three breakers in here. Bring those two wires in and just bring them in and um, have them come out through um, come out through the up uh, through the hole you drilled in so you have a one inch slot already in this and then you have you drill in another one and you bring it in and then go right back out you know this way they all meet up at one place and they all come out at one place um, and you just run one inch conduit um, in my particular case right down the roof and into the side of the garage um, that's how one way to do it uh, I'm not saying it's right I'm saying it's wrong I says one way to do it but as you can see guys Converting this over is a lot of work. Um, back in 07, you know, I didn't know anything about this stuff. Um, you, as you go through it, you learn, you pick stuff up. So um, if I were, you know, to do it differently, um, yeah, I'd have done it with the uh, uh, off-grid hybrid stuff. I wouldn't have uh, even messed with the pure grid tie. So, but uh, that's it, guys. Um, that's just one way to do it. Oh, one other thing I want to add into it, just uh, to make it more fun, um, if you go to Midnight Sellers uh, website uh, for the products, you're going to see a um, menu that says Rapid Shutdown over here off to the side. Go take a look at that because nowadays you have to be able to push a button. Let's just pick this guy here. This is the birdhouse. Basically, they want a device that can, you know, push a button and shut the entire system down to below 30 volts within, a, I think, 10 seconds or something like that. Now, it's a good idea, but let me show you how much this stuff costs. One birdhouse will control two shutoff boxes, and I would need two of them. Um, one for, um, one for this array. Actually, a four pole could do these these two arrays, no problem. So one for these two arrays and one for this array. Now let's look at the, at the prices for this stuff. Um, $425 for just a shutoff box. Um, the disconnect boxes, which um, I would need this guy here, which is the two pole, $395. This guy here, he's a four pole, $525. That's almost $1,500 right there. $1,400, $1,500 just for those three boxes alone. It's, it's a lot of money, but um, that's what's uh, what's going on now. So you can go in there and push that button and, and bring it below, I think, was it 30 volts or something like that? So just keep that in mind. That's something that uh, the new code now has has uh, decreed that you, you have a be able to push a button and shut it all off. Um, and from what I know, the way you do it is you have, a, you have that birdhouse box, say, over here on the wall. You run a Cat5 from, you know, into here, and I think you can piggyback two boxes off that first one. So, um, so yeah. So the so one one of the uh, one box that I showed you that four pole could handle these two guys here. So I probably mount that right there next to this combiner. Then I have to mount another one here and just run the Cat Five along with the conduit. So, but guys, that's it for now. I uh, just wanted to share that with you. That's how I would do it. Um, I guess that's it. Have a good one. Take care.